chasing Stuart Appleby. Yeah. This one looks perfect. In the centre again, so if he's feeling the heat, there's no indication of it just yet. That's a beautiful tee shot at nine. Ogilvy has had 16 birdies, one eagle, six bogeys, one double, one triple over the four days. A round that could have been anything. That's just a three iron for Ogilvy down at 10, trying to keep it out of that right hand trap, which is at 2.30. Lay up safely in the middle and an excellent opportunity to a nice chip to the green. Yeah, it's a good position that, Jeff, to attack the middle right pin position up on the hill at 10. Sharing second spot is Scott Laycock with Appleby at nine. The absorbing battle going on out here now with these players and uh, this is hugging the left hand side but on a good line, good shot, this nice line into the flag. Yeah, good tee shot there because, uh, after yesterday which this hole caused him some problems. Excellent tee shot. To ten, any else? One over for the day. outside for a short break and it's very steamy outside Sandy uh, very hot and humid R rain looks to be staying away for the moment as we go to piddle on a second shot from the right hand rough at 11 this is a tough tough shot from there nightmare hole for him too in the past I think I'm right in saying it's the first time he hasn't been in the water and that's why he's got his hands <laughs> In the air, he's come up short in the creek each day. <laughs> Robert Allenby, a winner last week. Back-to-back -back PGA Championships, a former Australian Open winner. Good final few holes, Andy. A round of 70. He finishes at three over, but it's been a somewhat frustrating week for him. Congratulates his good mate, Brett Ogle. Good shot from our high camera there. Uh, they're the two fairway bunkers which lurk down the left-hand side. And uh, as Lindsay said, perfect position to attack this flag, which today is uh, five metres on and ten for the left from the left. So uh, you don't want to go left. So that if you were here, you want to err uh, to the right of the flag. The other thing to keep into consideration here, it's only five on here, Jack. He's got to get this right back to the flag. Don't mess around with the front of the green. Seven iron from 142. Got it on a good line. How is it for length now? Beautiful shot. Great shot. Brilliant shot. I must say, I like the, the look of Scott Leacock. He's uh, matured so well up in uh, Japan. He looks totally in control of his emotions. He's happy with his game and down there, Appleby. Pineapple head showing us just uh, what is left for Appleby here, coming in over the water at the ninth. 134 with an eight iron and uh, as Lindsay said, don't tickle around short. This one looks right in close too. Oh, look at this. Two fantastic shots. 134 metres and about 10 centimetres. Just a little spray, wasn't it? <laughs> Anything you can do, I can do better. Well, nothing like them having a head-to-head -head battle, but don't forget Jeff Ogilvie. Um, premium shot, and it is a beauty too. Ninth, up ahead to the tenth. This uh, demanding little par four with the uh, tough, tough green. Elves trying to get a feel for what breeze, if any, there is out there because judgment at a premium here. 104 to go, as you can see. 
15 metres on and five from the right, so uh, he'd like to, to leave this underneath the hole, cutting up the slope for a birdie. Jack, I can tell you there's hardly any breeze out here now, and 104 with a wedge. To leave it under the hole here is going to be absolutely sensational if you can, because there's so little room. It was good from down on the fairway, it's right over the stick. Oh, how good was that? rather spun the wrong way then instead of sucking straight back it put a bit of a leg break on it oh there'll be next to go as I said at the start if he were a racehorse you'd then he can put an inquiry into his performance well, 42 the, yesterday and 31 today. Sorry, Jeff. It's all right, Jack. I was just saying he's the mover of the moment. And uh, once again, he's put this into the heart of the green and a nice upfield opportunity for three. Look at these galleries around nine, watching Stuart Appleby and Scott Laycock. Just on 30,000 fans coming through the grand in the first three days, and that's good news. And excellent crowds again today. And again to see this man win his first national title. Or will Jeff Ogilvy break through for the biggest four days in his career? Or Scott Laycock? It's going to be a memorable finish for all three. So remember, Appleby in front by one, both of them in tight here for birdies. It's a great three. Great three on a hole which has uh, caused its fair share of problems the ninth. Thomas beyond not least of them with a nine a little earlier. Great shot, isn't it? And the air raider there, quite often used to stop the lake stagnating. I think they're a great invention. Not too bad to look at either. Laycock to go eight under, to stay in touch. He does. So it looks like a three horse race now. As Birdie's just putting a bit of gap in the rest of the field, apart from Jeff Ogilvy. Here's Peter Lonard, having got over 11. Well, he took a double bogey six here yesterday. It would have been nice if he'd made three today, but uh, he's got to make four, hopefully. And stay at uh, three under. Not only a battle royal in the professional ranks, but uh, a great struggle in the amateur ranks with Chris Campbell shooting a 69. And the news is that James Nitties has had a seven at 10. So Campbell has finished at plus three for the championship. Nitties is still out there, but he is at plus four. We'll take a break. More shortly on seven from the Grand.
Ogilvy is putting here at the 10th, full of three. Ogilvy, who went through the turn in 31. Didn't quite get the line on this occasion, but uh, he'll stay at seven under, just two off the pace. Tell you what, Renton, he take his last eight holes now from yesterday. <laughs> Walk straight to the club and collect the trophy. Five under through the last eight holes last night. Back up on the tee, Appleby. Been a good hole for Appleby the last couple of days in uh, round two and three. He made birdies here. Parted on day one. Well, even better news for else. This would be four straight threes at the 10th if he got this in. And I think you saw Ogilvy's ball was going to miss on the right. He added that into his calculations and, well, confirmation it's just not been his day. It's getting harder and harder as time goes on. No birdies yet today for any else, just the one bogey at the seventh hole. Scott Laycock, this has been a good hole for Scott Laycock. He's had a birdie and an eagle, remember? He had a two on day two. No problems for Laycock off the tee. Well, they say it all starts, Jack, with nine to play, and uh, it's going to be a tough finish, isn't it, with uh, 10, 11, 12, 16, of course, as well. But let's have a look at some of the holes to watch on the back nine here at the Grand. And we'll move ahead firstly to the 11th, where you uh, are on the tee, and it's a blind tee shot. Yeah, blind tee shot, and uh, the big trap on the right, if you can, try and take it over the right edge, or try and hit a cut shot back into the slope, but... Uh, even that shot doesn't seem to work because everything kicks into the left rough and then really depends on what sort of lie you have over the creek which surrounds the green right front and left and uh, a pin today right in that back left corner. Scott Laycock's had trouble on 11 the last couple of days. On 12 you've got several options off the tee. Yeah well it's a par 5 of only 472 metres which by modern day standards is not long but if you can get yourself down the left side you can get the gap between that tree and the major trees on the left. If not, you've got to bring it in from right to left or take it up over the top. Uh, made more difficult, of course, by the water being in front of the green and one place you don't want to be is in the back track. Stuart Appleby knows it well. He had an eight there on day one. The, the 17th, the shortish par five. Yeah, well, this is another hole that's uh, got a tree in the line you want to take for your second. If you can get the ball down into this area somewhere, you can certainly reach the green with a 3, 4, 5 iron, but that tree there that I'm talking about in the middle of the fairway, that adds to the complications of the second shot. And of course the water in front and a tough pin to get at today with it being so short and right. Just three of the holes to watch on the back nine here at the Grand. It would probably appear that it could well be a three horse race at the moment. Uh, have you got a gut feeling? Look, uh, I thought at the start of the day you'd probably have to go with Appleby because of his experience. I'm very impressed with Scott Laycock. His timing has not changed one iota. And the other one, of course, Jeff Ogilvy's on, on the move, and that's always a good sign. He's going in the right direction. And we see Rod Pampling's ball, as we've seen many times this week, rock hard that green and whistling over into the back trap, probably mostly because of coming from the rough on the right. Well, here are the galleries and Stuart Appleby on 10. Now, he's just come off a birdie at nine, so I think he'd dearly like to really strike one up next to the stick here and say over to you, Mr. Laycock. This will be one of the playoff holes if it is required. It's given up 10 birdies to this stage today. Going to the narrowest part of the green, Sandy. Has to be radar-like accuracy here. Just over the bunker, this looks great again. That second half, uh, uh, two of the best shots you'll see. Nine and 10, Appleby's on fire. James Nitties, who's uh, had his problems on 10, but here he is at 11. 
Yeah, this looks very good going just right of the flag. If you can hold the green, this is looking very good. It's going to finish up about pin high and give himself a very good chance of making a three here. Yeah, that seven at ten didn't do him any good. No. And, uh, his fellow amateur Chris Campbell finished with a 69 today. That was a great effort. Good week for him. Now Scott Lake. Oh. going in the bunker. Now he's got a good birdie chance, albeit that it's a difficult putt. So there are the top three and that's what it appears to be a battle with Appleby, Laycock and Ogilvy. Appleby by one from Laycock, a further stroke to Ogilvy if you've just joined our coverage. Stay with us because it's going to be a dogfight to the end. Earls and Pampling chasing them home at three under. Green and Lonard at two under. Stephen Leaney. Good day for him today. He is at one under par as we take a break from the grand. We've seen so many players in the bunker just behind the 11th green and it's pampling this time. I'm amazed more players haven't actually gone to that bunker. They've been flirting with the water at the front and it's got some sixes, sevens, eights, nines, all sorts of things. And not a difficult bunker shot. I probably birdied nine. Can he birdie ten? was it and the Appleby moves to 10 under par and takes a two shot lead over Laycock a three shot advantage over Ogilvy James Nitties this is up on the 11th green just taken seven two glorious shots in here at 11 and the moment he stood up you knew he hadn't timed the, that putt and he's now as they say, one behind the other amateur who's already in the clubhouse with his 69 Chris Campbell 
for the amateur medal and uh, a battle too for the Stonehaven Cup. Laycock at 10. Yes, so narrow the gap once more. Well done, well done. A bit tough though, go 3-3 three, three and make no ground. I tell you, that may be a very important hole for him. He's very nearly in the bunker through the green, stopped just short of it and then spun back onto the putting surface. Bampling for his par at 11. And he stays three under, but he's now seven shots off the pace, being set by Appleby. Stop very much, sir. Well, back down the fairway, or more precisely in the right-hand rough. 50-odd front. So it's 73 front now. That's Mark, his caddy, it, it, who used to caddy. the fairway at the pitch, 165, is going to jump at least. He used to caddy for Jesper Parnovic. And Ogilvy, and amid all the catastrophes that have gone on here, he's had three fours. And he's that close, reasonable line. He's got to go for it. Always inclined to pull the ball when the ball's above you. If he pull it to the left. Well, Bruce, I'm sure he'd like to make it four fours out of there, out of that rough. 173 with a six iron. Pretty way over the back. It flew on him. But from the looks of it, first looks there, uh, Jeff, not too bad. It landed yeah. among the gallery. It hasn't hopped on into the bushes. And he's got a... Well, he's got a sort of chip and run, something like that back. He can go between the two bunkers. It's not too bad, Jeff. You probably can't see it. Any else? Same hole. Well, Ernie with one four four to the green. He's bugged it twice out of the first three days here. Out of the left rough once again. Very hard to hold the ball coming out of that rough. Great shot. Will it hold? Will it hold? Running, running, running. Hold it. Good. Well, someone wants him to win. <laughs> he finds it amusing. A little bit of Afrikaans coming in there, Sandy. <laughs> well, while uh, these two are preparing to challenge the 11th, Jack, take us for a journey over it. Yeah, well, this has been the, the preeminent hole all week. The player that's the hole that's really caused the players problems because of the. Well, largely because of the camber on the fairway. This trap very much in play. That's just about your line over the left edge of that bunker. And then you've got to hopefully get a favourable bounce. You can see here, everything that lands on the fairway kicks into the left-hand rough. And then, of course, you can't spin the ball to a rock-hard green with water in front and to each side. So it's a very demanding hole, even though with the big hitters here, only going in with wedges, they still haven't been able to stop the ball. And uh, the slope, a little bit from back to front and left to right, particularly in that back section of the green, you can see the arrows dragging the golf balls towards that back bunker. 4.71, first day 4.96, yesterday 4.8. Has been a par 5 for the members, but converted to a 4 for this championship. Just two birdies. Stuart Appleby has parred it every day. Laycock has bogeyed it for the last two days. Saw a letter yesterday from a viewer who claimed they're all playing this the wrong way. You have to hit a big cut into the right to left slope. Well, I can inform that gentleman that all those tactics have been tried and you still go in the left rough. I yeah. could probably do it, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with your gay fade, Patrick. <laughs> 240 to fly the trap on the right. I don't think you'd have enough room on the left, though, with that big tree there. <laughs> this one is splitting the fairway, but watch the reaction once it gets down through the chute. Now, watch it kick away to the left. And all you've got to do is hope that you lie nicely. Well, it's sat down a little, hasn't it? Well, the good thing is he's got virtually right down the bottom. He's only going to have a wedge for his second, albeit out of the rough. The complication then, Bruce, is the players aren't sure whether the ball's going to fly from the rough or come out soft, and that's why we've seen so many players dunk the ball in the creek. Probably the better play, if you were to were into the back trap, you can still get five, but in that creek, sixes become preeminent. 
This is about the right hand half of the fairway and uh, drawing back in. It'll run down through this shoot again. This could end up okay actually if it gets uh, the right break, but it's starting to head left now and it'll be very interesting to see where it finishes. Running down, running down. Well, that's what we we're talking about. Guess what? Left rough. Couldn't hit that any better. Jeff Ogilvy. Oh, sadly, he's played a stunning shot. He had to fly that all the way to the edge of the green. It was rough ground. There was a little mound at the very back there. So Couldn't ask for better. Chance for him to salvage par. Appleby, a leader by one from Laycock. Some other completed scores. The best rounds of the day have been uh, from Anthony Gilligan, a 68, Stuart Bouvier, a 69, Chris Campbell, a 69, and Craig Jones, also a fourth round 69. This is Ernie Ells a few moments ago on the par for 11th, his third shot. Been waiting a long time for something to drop and he's still waiting. Now Rod Pampling at the 12th, the par 5, good Good tee shot required. There's been a bit of a weight on the uh, 12th tee here, Jack, but this is a very solid tee shot hanging down the left side of the fairway. This should end up somewhere near the middle of the fairway. It's just been that sort of day for Rod Bandling. Hasn't been able to get the putter going. Here's Ogilvy. And this would be some up and down at this stage of the tournament. Got well it. done. Well done. So important, momentum, impetus, those sort of things at the moment. A sh drop shot then would be a real yeah. showstopper. James Nitties. A little bit of uh, body English there suggesting the ball's gone left. Well, oh, kind kick. Extremely kind kick. Seen that a lot, Jack, haven't we, up that left hand side? Scott Laycock looking down 11. Mm, doesn't look that good a lie. You can only just see the top of the ball. Hang on a minute, mate. 
It's not too bad, Jack. I had a look at it. Um, tough shot. There's the water that embraces the front of the screen. He's got to obviously get over that. But uh, And then try and pull it up. Now, he's got it on a pretty good line. It will pull up, I believe. Should be OK. Yeah, not bad. Good effort. But he only pitched that, what, 18 inches? Probably a yard and a half, <laughs> metre and a half on the green. Also on 11, the ball of Stuart Appleby, and that's what lies ahead of him. Yeah, I think the graphic there showing quite clearly that the line isn't straight at the flag. Yeah. You need to put this in the fat part of the green, particularly because he's not coming from the fairway. And that certainly doesn't look to be a good lie at all. Grass gets between the ball and the club face, and of course uh, the juices in the grass reduce the amount of spin. Jack, I've been up there and had a look at it as well. As Lindsay said, uh, Scott definitely had the better of the two lies. This one's sitting down 114 metres. Vicious, vicious pin over on the left-hand side. To finish somewhere near Scott Laycox would be ideal. Now, this is headed pin high. Now it's got to stop. Oh, look, this is just a masterful shot. A masterful shot. That could be the shot of the day. Pat locked it. <laughs> I suspect Appleby did too. I'm sure he did. <laughs> Brett Rumford is a couple over for the day, playing with Thomas Bjorn. An eagle attempt at 12 to get him back to even par. And makes it a fine putt from Brett Rumford. Well, he dropped a shot at the 11th, so that's got more than got that shot back. These are the exciting young names of the future, Rumford, James Nitties. Well, we heard of all the problems of Thomas Bjorn, nine at the ninth, five at the tenth. And he's followed that, believe it or not, with two threes, three at 11 and three at 12. Well, that's almost right at his ship. Still a little low in the water, but he certainly feels better about things than he did 45 minutes ago. A couple over for the day. Well, James Nitties with uh, not a very good tee shot, got no option, but to lay up out to the right hand side of those trees. Yeah, he's just knocked it down the right, a little bit further right than he would have liked. Interesting sidebar, Jack, which I'm sure you'd be interested about since he's a, a Newcastle boy. He has the word corn written on his ball in very big letters, and earlier on he had the word tool written on his ball. So he's obviously a uh, heavy metal rocker from way back. The ancients in the commentary box are not able to comment on that. Glad you're able to keep us informed of that. Pampling can certainly reach this green. What line will he take is the question. It's unfortunately, Jack, someone just opened a can of VB in the audience and he had to back off. Well, it's good VB weather. He can go left of the tree. You'll need to cut it a little bit. From 207 metres, just starting a little right of the stick, heading towards the right edge of the green. Well, that's the water moccasin eye view of what's going on up here. And first to putt is going to be Scott Laycock. Yet another birdie. He's had two at the last two and hasn't done him any good. At least as regards his contest with Stuart Appleby. And of course, the more these two keep pouring in the birdies, the more it puts distance between them and the rest. Three in a row. Oh, three yeah, in yeah, a yeah. row. Back 
with a share of the lead at 10 under par. See, that's a big three in that oh. hole. And then add in fourth round, <laughs> final day. It's for half. It's funny, you almost think they're slipstreaming one another now, Jack. Uh, and of course, the closer to the winning line you get and the bigger the gap between them and the rest, the more they do start keeping an eye. Point you raised earlier on. Well, they've made uh, birdies on top of one another at 9 and 10, and Laycock's already provided the third part of the equation. Can Stuart Appleby knock this in for them to have the same score of birdie on successive holes? I think he may just be waiting for the 12th tee to clear here, which is just across the way. Let the group over the other side drive. It's a stare of full-on concentration. He had a pretty solid year in America. Played in 28 events. Missed the cut in only six. Pretty good effort. And four top ten finishes. But still looking for his first win of the year. Can't get settled. And that often suggests that he's not comfortable about the line he selected. There's two schools of thought there. Let your first judgment be the one you go with. But if you can't make yourself hit it on that line, the best thing to do is walk, walk away like he's done. Reprogram the computer and start again. This is some head-to-head -head battle. Anything you can do, oh, oh, oh. I can do better. Well, it was Laycock who said, OK, over to you. <laughs> and Stuart Appleby has responded in the way he knows best. He again leads by one. And Jeff Ogilvy with tremendous length. It's a good tee shot here. You're right, Jack, he does need a good one here to set up the birdie and he's ruffled it all day off the tees apart from one or two. And this is no exception, right in the heart. James is at the 12th third shot. Remember, he had to lay up having hit it into the trees and come out sideways. But it is a par five, remember? And many a four made from up there. Oh, I suspect on this occasion as well. Moving ahead to 18, and uh, I think many people thought Craig Parry may challenge this week, a course that could suit him. Done pretty well today, he's four under for the day. So he'll have that tap in for a round of 67. 31 out was the secret of that. Through the front line. Now back to the 12th, Ernie Els with his two shot. Probably a little more right than he would have wanted, but uh, safely on the short grass. Rod Pampling, third shot. And I think a lot of professionals would think that that was the harder shot of the two compared to his, but it might go in the hole. Been some great shot making so far today, and look at these putts in the hand, premium light shots. First of all, Scott Haycock. That took him to 10 under, so then it was up to Appleby to sneak away again by one, and he was able to do it. Appleby holding his lead outright at 11 under par. Great battle, isn't it? As these two go head to head, 
As we said, Craig Parry finished with a 67 today. That is the best completed round for the day. Anthony Gilligan, a 68. Craig Jones, Chris Campbell, Stuart Bouvier, 69s. Number of players under par today. Brad Kennedy, a 70. Michael Long and Robert Allenby. Last week's PGA winner also a round of 70 today. A break from the Grand and more shortly in our coverage of the Holden Australian Open. This is Rod Pampling, desperately seeking birdies to try and climb towards Mrs. Appleby and Laycock. Gets one. Takes him to a couple under for the day, four under for the championship. James Nitties after that wonderful third in here, this for birdie, and he gets it. Good performance from the young man when I had the sh soul shattering seven at ten to go follow it with a couple of fours. The Winter Games are coming away on seven from Salt Lake City in February. What a huge couple of months of sport on seven January and February following the Australian Open tennis. It's the Olympic Games from February the 8th, the opening ceremony to the closing ceremony on the 24th. It's going to be uh, a wonderful 16 days and you can see it all exclusively on seven. Jeff Ogilvy, almost in position A off the tee, he can go down the left side of the green, maybe a hint of fade about this, ball fractionally below his feet and he's pulled it. He yeah, double crossed that uh, Bruce, tried to fade it through the air and of course double crossed it and pulled it way left in big trouble. Water. Well the problem is there it is in water, what does he do now, where does he drop it? That's a huge mistake. Else. Also on 12. Oh. No 
no such problems for Ernie as it just meanders slowly towards the pin. On the tee, Stuart Appleby. I think that they may have realised, Sandy, that uh, their nearest challenger is in a bit of trouble because they've been standing on this tee and this is another great tee shot from Stuart, although it's out to the right. It's going to make it an interesting second shot. He's going to have to hit a big cut around the trees and have a shot from just over 200 metres. Well, as he heads down the 12, Jack, we should take a journey down it as well. And the fairway trees have been the talking point of 12 all this week. Yeah, well, it's not a short, uh, it's not a long par five, rather, at 472 metres. So the question is, uh, where do you want to attack this hole from? Ideally, if you can get up the left side, you get a clear shot through to the left of these trees, which pretty much block your line to the green out. Either that or you've got to get it right over on the right-hand side and then complicated by the fact that the water in front of the green and then uh, the creek up to the left of it, which uh, Jeff Ogilvy has found, 21 metres long, but uh, quite a sloping green from back to front. And uh, the pin today, I can tell you, cut 15 on and in the centre of the green. So I would expect that this whole day under the calm conditions, you really should make birdie. Laycock on the tee. Two wonderful bidders in the last yeah, hole. They're yeah. showing their class on the field here now. And this is a beautiful drive. This will uh, follow uh, Stuart Appleby's uh, line and uh, he's going to have an interesting shot in here too. Yeah, well, if you were Scott Laycock trying to chase Stuart Appleby and you made three birdies in a row and hadn't made any ground, you'd be a bit disappointed, I would have thought, through that stretch of holes. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll go for forward to the 13th, James Nitties, who's trying to make up a shot or two to catch Chris Campbell who's in the clubhouse for the amateur prize and it's a bit of an ask these closing holes there's only really the 17th that's a birdie opportunity the part the last par five this is Peter Lonard birdie attempt at 14 unable to get it to four under Yeah, he got three birdies in a succession early on and one suspected that he might really f keep that momentum going, but he's just stalled. Here's Jeff Ogilvy. Remember his ball hit the trees and landed in the water. So Jeff Flanagan, a ruling taking place at the moment. And yeah. what's the situation? Sandy, they're taking so much time. Ogilvy's caddy's arguing with the officials. I don't know. That's quite the right way to go about it. Ogilvy's waiting back behind the hazard. He feels he's going <coughs> to drop it on the, the air. It, it crossed the hazard. So he's back about 80 metres down the fairway and the caddy's eventually coming down now. So he will take a penalty and he'll be playing his fourth shot. Thank you, Jeff. Every group's got a a referee or two with them. The charge of this game is Greg Fitzharding from Western Australia and Gus Seebeck, who's a PGA Tour official. What are we doing? Are they just getting there? Or? Yeah. They drop zone. Who is? Oh, sorry, uh, Jeffrey is. What a bit. He's one step back. No, that's Gus Seebeck there with a the red hat on. Who's Trevor Hurden's uh, right-hand man? Well, before today, he'd powered this on the first three rounds. Maybe in consultation with uh, Trevor Hurden there, talking in his earpiece. about where did it last cross the hazard is it a lateral water hazard when it's red it's a lateral water hazard which means you drop it aside rather than behind yeah I think it's a bit confusing because I'm not sure that it's a lateral water hazard all the way around in front of it but I think what the argument's about is uh, there are some drop designated drop zones here and uh, I think what uh, Ogilvy's caddies trying to suggest is that it should be dropped in the drop zone Ernie Earls now getting involved. Well, let's see if we can uh, pick up anything from having another look at the shot. Uh, 
Well, he was trying to aim it up the left and cut it back, and as Jeff was saying, it's a double cross, which means he goes left instead of right. And I suppose the argument here, Jack, is, is it in the hazard that the, that the drop zones, or is it really in a stream leading into the hazard, in which mm. case it probably doesn't go in the drop zone? I agree with you, though. The red line, the red line is, it doesn't matter where the ball lands, it's where it crosses the hazard line, and then they've got to determine whether this is a lateral hazard, in which case... There's his golf ball just in there, but Bruce, I think the hazard in front of the green is actually a water hazard. Oh, no. I stand corrected. Looks like it's a red line. Certainly when first crossed the water way back, mm. sort of level with the tree, about 100 metres short of the green. Well, surely it's back where he is here. Yeah. He'll be playing four, of course. And uh, always a disconcerting, breaks the concentration and all this is going on. Doesn't help the people behind if they're up there waiting. Maybe it's a time of the old-fashioned rule of waving those behind through. Well, I think we might take a break while he thinks about it and they come to a decision. But we'll certainly be back to see the result of that. Appleby, in the meantime, holding a one-shot lead over Scott Laycock this could make it a two-man battle. This is the man of the moment, Jeff Ogilvie. He's taken a drop. He's playing his fourth shot to the 12th. Well, they've made him drop it on the other side, Sandy. That's what all the argument was about. Well, that's his fourth, Jack, and uh, they've been arguing about where to hit it from, and this has got to go. Water. Well, he's just got to take his time here now. <laughs> Sixth shot for Jeff Ogilvick. Well, now he's reloading again and needs to hit this another 10 <laughs> metres further. Right at the stick and good shot.
A number of visitors here this week. One is Charles Howell III. An eagle opportunity at 17. <coughs> Chance for him to get into red figures. One way or the other. And it will be via a birdie. Takes him to four under for the round. As we go to James Nidius. Birdie putt up the slope at 13. Just not enough porridge. Jack, the best round of the day has come from the Victorian lefty Richard Green. Shot a 66. Terrific finish. Good to see the lefty back in form. Peter Lonard second to the 50th. Lonard is uh, currently at three under. Tied with Ernie Ells. So he's got that uh, for his par. Well, delays are plenty in this. Uh, Stuart Appleby, uh, Lindsay, who's been following this group, and Scotty Laycock. One of these players, you would imagine, is going to win this event, and the other one's going to finish second, unless something extraordinary happens. Yeah, well, you'd have to think that uh, this fella, Jeff Ogilvy, has lost his chance. By tugging that second left here. He's going to go for seven or eight, if he, unless he makes this. Well, and uh, just thinking about the two fellas down the fairway, they've both just come off a succession of birdies. And then uh, right at a crucial stage in this championship. I wonder who will be best at putting that out of their mind and getting their concentration back, if you like. The point is, when you, when you get on a roll like that, inevitably you want to keep going. You don't want to stop. In the meantime, Ernie Els, to improve his position, but he's had no luck at all with the putter today. Maybe this time. How many putts has he hit oh. like that? But it just hung on the lip or stayed out there or broke too much. Well, it's a birdie and he does get it to four under. And that's his first birdie of the day. This for eight. Oh, it will be for eight. There goes his chance of winning his first national title. James Nettis at this par 3 14th, quite exposed section of the course. And uh, over the first three days, the wind has played havoc with them. Left hand bunker, not such a bad miss. Not what he had in mind, of course. Peter Lonard. But he's putting for par. 15. We understand it's now for a birdie, but that's a par now. So Alonard stays at three under. One behind Els, Ogilvy and Pampling. But uh, seven behind Laycock. And eight behind the leader on screen now, Stuart Appleby. Yes, well, Renton, it seems like an eternity, doesn't it? We've been waiting here a long, long time. Now, whether the troubles of Ogilby have convinced Stewie to take it down the right-hand side and play it safe, and that's exactly what he's done because he's moved the crowd. He's only 203. When I say only 203, that's certainly within his range of getting it home. But from this part of the fairway, it's a very risky shot. Big cut around the trees. He's decided not to play that. Well, he's really tossing up. I mean, we've been here so long, and now he's moved back and forth to this bag three times. What I can tell you is a little bit of general interest that the car park at Carrara, the park and ride station, is full. So there's a very, very big crowd out here now, and they're loving every minute of this and what is almost certainly now a head-to-head -head duel. Well, 
surely he's got to go right up the tree here because uh, to take it down that gap that we spoke about, he'd have to cut it a long way and uh, run the risk of the Jeff Ogilvy type shot. So uh, I reckon he's going to hit this high with a draw. Yes, that's where he's aiming, Jack. Four iron. Right. He's got just a touch thing, he's flirting with the trees. Now this might get lucky if it can sling a land off this bank. Oh. Oh. That's another great shot. Very well thought out shot in the end, but he knows he caught it a bit thin <laughs> and it whistled through that gum. <laughs> but a good miss, as they say. Flash it on Laycock. He's going through the gap. Yes, and as we go down to the wire, these shots become more and more pivotal. And, uh-oh, just hang on one minute. Yeah, now he's got a metal wood in his hand, and uh, some of these guys may have a five metal in their, in their bags. So, uh, probably an ideal club, four or five metal. Bring it in high with a fade. And, of course, what he doesn't want to do is double-cross it like Jeff, Jeff Ogilvy did. Oh, what a beautiful shot from Laycock. An even better one than uh, Stuart Appleby. My goodness, these two players are playing so well. It'd be a shame at the end of the day that one of them is going to have to lose. Nitties. Bunker at 14. <coughs> Currently tied with Campbell in the race for amateur honours, both at three over. Good shot. Charles Howell, second shot to the 18th, just coming off a birdie at 17. Oh, he's currently one under par. One of only 11 players under par coming to the end of uh, this year's championship. Chance of a birdie at the last for the American. Richard Green has the best round of the day. Fine round of 66 to get him into the red numbers. 67 from Craig Parry, but the story is at the very top. Stuart Appleby and Scott Laycock. Shot for shot as they battle it out for national honours. Appleby by one at the moment as they play 12. Jeff Ogilvy has seen his chances slip by. Richard Green as we've seen. A big round today. Craig Perry also. An excellent final round. Still wide open. It's going to go right down to the wire. You'll see it here on seven when we return.
Stuart Appleby has been a professional now for eight years. Still looking for his first national title, but it may not be far away. Big swing on this putt from right to left. See the slope coming off the shoulder of the bunker in the bottom left corner of this green. Starts to come back here, but it doesn't look like he's hit it. Not a bad putt, but uh, a bit short at one end. James Nitties hoping to save par at 14 and remain at three over. So that will just edge Campbell ahead of him. Campbell shot a 69. Hold for a birdie at the last. This for a round today of 66. 67 to uh, finish for Charles Howell uh, the third. Yeah, and a name that uh, you can probably put in your little black book for f future reference. Big wraps on him. Now a big putt here for Scott Laycock. This putt for an eagle three after that wonderful second shot across the water. In. And... Uh, oh! It had to go left and die in the hole, and it just moved ahead of the right, making it miss. Four buddies in a row, however, for Laycock, who in his last uh, ten appearances in Japan this summer, or this year anyway, missed one cut, but was never worse than 16th in any of the other nine. Yeah, Mr. Consistency, and that's uh, by looking at his golf swing, you can see why doesn't make too many bad mistakes very sound technique and a good putter four buddies in a row two for uh, Stuart Appleby as he moves to 12 under he's 12 under Laycock 11 under as they go to the 13th well, Ernie Els has this putt to go five under He's due to get one in a minute, isn't he? Uh, yes, he is. They tried to get away, didn't it? Oh, dear. I'm glad the hole was there. <laughs> Two buddies in the row for uh, <laughs> and they all of a sudden. <laughs> James Nitties is one behind uh, Chris Campbell in the amateur battle at the present moment. He's just coming off a bogey at 14 now, has 115 metres in. A little bit indecisive about the shot, there's uh, barely a breath of air here. Pin 17 on, five from the left, so he's in a perfect position to go at the stick, but won't be able to see the bottom of the flag because of the lips of those bunkers up ahead. Start a little left of the stick. That's a, a very solid shot in here. Good opportunity for a birdie. Down to the tee at uh, the 13th in this battle for the title between, well, the two players now in this group, Appleby and Laycock. Fantastic golf they're playing. Stuart Appleby five under for the round, Laycock four under, and they've coming off four birdies in succession, each of them. Trees in the middle of the fairway here, he's got to take them, this golf ball left, and hope for the camber on the fairway to kick the ball back to the right. Appleby's birdied this hole on two previous occasions, Laycock has parred it uh, in all three rounds. Well, judging from the statistics, Appleby has the edge at this particular hole. We were talking about the consistency of Scott Laycock uh, up in Japan. He was third in greens in regulation. So he doesn't make too many mistakes. Yeah, something I think he epitomises, which Stuart Appleby said yesterday, or actually on uh, Friday. He said his arms and his body weren't in sync. And I think what this fellow does, Scott Laycock, very much epitomise that. Just watch, there's no differentiation. The arms work with the body as it turns through the shot. And that 
that may be just a little bit tight with those uh, four trees there which uh, feature the middle of the fairway pin today at uh, 13 on 22 nine from the left is uh, ahead at uh, 14 ernie ells not been a good hole there uh, for uh, ernie at 14. a couple of bogeys already this week i don't think he's been on the green yet Renton. he's uh, been in the bunker a couple of times and he's lost it to the right the other time no oh, no he's found the dance floor going through his setup. Just a little sand wedge from 86 metres. This is drawing right in on the pin. This looks very good. He has hit this stiff. Looks like a certain dirty for Pamplin. Perfect, Jason. Jeffrey Ogilvy now on 14. He does not look happy. I think the problem here, Sandy, is it's between clubs, this hole, for the, most of these guys. It's not a six iron, but seven iron. You've got to jump all over it to get it there. Peter Lonard, birdie opportunity here at 16. This is to go four under. He's hoping for a big finish. He had a big start today with birdies on the first three holes, but then his round stalled. Maybe he can kick start it at the end. There is our leader, Stuart Appleby. He leads by one from Scott Laycock. And it's out of those two for national honours. This is our leader, Stuart Appleby. He leads Scott Laycock by one shot. They're having a real head-to-head -head battle here at the Grand on Queensland's Gold Coast. Seven iron in his hands. And he's holding them at bay at the moment. Pampling for a buddy. This at 15. 
and he gets it and Pampling moves to five under par and he joins Ernie Earl in third place but both of them are six uh, shots behind second place to Laycock who's about to hit his second shot to the 13th that's where he is pineapple head showing us just exactly what he's got to do the pin as I said today is on 22 nine from the left that will be already up there with a buddy chance Now, this is a different proposition altogether here for Scotty, but gee, these guys are playing fantastic golf. He's got this branch in front of, in front of him here, just from these menacing trees in the middle of the fairway here. Trying to keep it underneath this branch. Done that. Got it on a pretty good line, too. Would it release? Very good. Great shot again. This is an unbelievable tournament. Well, the battle continues for the minor placing, that being third place. And Ernie Earls is one of those in the fight for that. A long birdie putt here. He's at five under. Go, go. <laughs> Wonderful putt from where he was. He'll stay tied with Pampling on five under. First prize this week, 270000 Australian dollars. Second prize, 153000 No money for this man, but he could well be the leading amateur. James Nitties, this was uh, his putt a few moments ago. That's a birdie, so it gets him back on level terms. No. Sorry, it wasn't a birdie, of course, he came up short. It was um, his playing partner who stiffed it. Pampling. On the last of the par threes. Third most difficult hole of the week, this uh, 16th. Has hit some beautiful irons today, Rod Pampling. Just coming up a little bit short, just catching the fringe on the right. Pin today, 28 paces on. Now, Jeff Algovy, who's uh, had his problems again here, is to save par at 14. Remember, he was short and right. Oh, that's an excellent save particularly in terms of what happened a couple of holes ago. This is where the real action is uh, th this afternoon. It's at 13. Appleby in the light blue there. Scott Laycock will be first to, to putt. Jack, is it a classic case of one drawing the other along? I think so now uh, because they realise that they've beaten off all the opposition and it just really gets down to a two-man war here and uh, I think they're both really enjoying it because they're both playing well and uh, as you quite rightly point out as often is the case you get uh, two guys playing together and they get playing well and the momentum carries from one back to the other but some pretty high stakes at the moment uh, with just five holes to play for the Open Championship of this country a little bit of left to right borrow. Oh, went the other way. <laughs> so the door slightly ajar for Stuart Appleby. James Nitties on 16. He's at plus four, and he's trying to get one back on Chris Campbell, who has finished his round, and he finished at three over. Beautiful shot. That is a terrific shot from James Nitties. Meanwhile, back on 13, Appleby for a birdie to go to 13 under and take a two-shot lead to the short 14th. Well, I wonder his additional experience just count in the end. Well, that was the only reason I thought at the start of the day that I probably fancied him. Although Scott Laycock has shown that uh, 
his golf game has gone to a new level from the experience of getting into contention on a regular basis in Japan. It's a good feeling and you carry those feelings with you when you get in a similar position. And as I said, the door ajar here for Appleby. Can he in increase his lead to two? No, he can't. Well, it reasonably well in America this year, although he hasn't won. He was 14th in the putts per round statistics, averaging 28.41 putts a round. It's a good call, Rent, and I think most club golfers could learn something from that. If you really want to improve your game, the short game is the first place you should start to look, because most club golfers would be lucky if they averaged 33 putts when you consider Stuart Appleby averaging 28 and a bit that's five shots around so uh, that's where you can really improve your score Appleby for par now at 13 stays one in front of Laycock on 17 this is Adam Scott who is a couple under for the day. Now that he's just missing that eagle attempt. I get the feeling there, Sandy, uh, he'll win one of these before he's much older. Pampling, chance for outright third spot. Lovely touch. $100,000 to the player who finishes in third spot. And for our winner, $270,000. Will it be Appleby? Will it be Laycock?
This is Stuart Appleby, our current leader of the Holden Australian Open. He's playing the 14th, par three here of 175 metres. Has he got the right club in his hand? Well, there you go, see that's what I was saying earlier. Six iron for some of them is uh, landing in the middle of the green and going through. Seven iron, not quite enough. Down the L's. This is for a birdie. And all of a sudden, Ernie has found the touch that has eluded him for so long. Three birdies in the last four holes, six under par now, Ernie, third place on his own, just ahead of Pampling. Laycock. This pin is placed in a very, very difficult position, just over this left track, and he's hitting six iron. He's got it going straight at it, straight at it. This could be really good. That's about as good as we've seen because, as Lindsay pointed out, that pin hidden by the bunker and uh, a very firm, fast green. Ahead to James Nitties, who's having this great struggle with Chris Campbell for amateur honours. Campbell back in the clubhouse after a 69 today and finishing at three over. Great week for him, but Nitties is doing just as well. He, at the moment, is one stroke back. Third shot at 17 for uh, Peter Lonard. Oh, that might come back a bit. No, it's going to stop all right, but uh, not a particularly good shot from uh, Lonard. After his uh, birdie at 16, he's on four under. Jeff Ogilvy at this... Terrific par 3, 16th. That's 4 iron Jack for Ogilvy. Big shot on the back of it. Hang on, it's taking the feedback off this back of this bank. Look at this, what a shot. 4 iron to there. Well, I'd say that's taking every advantage of the contours, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's a wonderful sight, isn't it? The green in the foreground, vineyard in the background, and Stuart Appleby getting closer and closer to winning his first Holden Australian Open title. And good shot from behind there, just what he's got with this chip. It's no easy chip because uh, the slope from left to right off the shoulder of the bunker is going to skirt this left edge of the green because it's going to break sharply to his right. Really requires some deft touch here. Probably play this with his sand wedge back at his stance, shut the club face just to here and he'll pitch it on the green and try and chase it up to the cup. Well, the door may just open a little for Scott Laycock. Yeah, not uh, a very good tee shot from Stuart Appleby. Put the cat amongst the pigeons now. Peter Lonard has this putt to go to five under as he chases a minor placing that he misses. Yeah, I'm often asked about the prize money, Sandy. Uh, whatever the total is, first prize is usually 17.5%. And then it goes on down to 60th money. Everybody that plays over the last two days gets something. Except for the amateurs, of course. Coming home, Adam Scott. A couple under for the day. Well, that's going to roll all the way back down. It was the first three days when it was firm and fast. That ball rolled back down into the rough. And it's still trickly. It's not going to be far away from it again. Now, there's an awkward shot from there. 
Looks flat on your screen. There's a big swale there in front of that hole. Here's a big putt, Jack. No, this to get him probably a share of the lead. Oh, yes! Got it. Might even get him the lead. Oh, oh late shot swing here. To 12 under. And thought, back to you, Mr. Appleby. I thought that was going to just hang on the edge and not drop, but uh, it did. Well done, Scott Laycock. Appleby's got to hold his putt now to stay level at 12 under. And of course, psychologically, uh, Appleby knows he's thrown the house at him over the last five holes. Well, Laycock's had five birdies in the last six. He just won't go away. <laughs> Appleby's had four. This is not an easy putt. Two and a half metres or so. Breaks from his left to right. Not the favourite putt of the professionals. They'd rather have the other one right to left where they can seemingly hit into the break. This break across your body. Uh, quite often it's said that you should slightly open your stance so your arms can work down the line on left to right breaking putts. Just outside the left lip. Pretty quick. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Tremendous stuff. Both uh, Laycock and Appleby today have dropped only one shot. Laycock slipped up at the eighth, the short eighth. Appleby slipped up at the seventh. But what a putt there by Appleby. They stay tied now. Twelve under. Four to play. This is Richard Lee on 17 playing with Peter Lonard today oh, kidding please that is for an eagle that is cruel it is cruel and Scott with this very difficult shot you can see all the slope in front of him he really wants to pitch it into that bank and chase it up but he hasn't hit it hard enough again Oh. He might roll back down to his feet. Don't go anywhere. That's an embarrassed smile on his face. It's a way. Oh. I'm just about to go away and have a cup of tea before this finishes rolling. <laughs> it might stop this one, but because it's. Uh... Yes, it has. Don't want to be short on that 18th. On 16, any else? Just off the cut surface for another birdie. <laughs> Tantalisingly close. Still four threes in a row, two of them birdies for Ernie Els. Six under, third place. 15th tee. A shortish par four, but there's water on the left and traps all up the right so the order of the day is position from the tee perhaps an iron at the uh, left hand side of the first right hand bunker yeah this is the right strategy here now jack there's two strategies of course up the left with driver but he's playing an iron straight down the middle of the fairway perfectly placed these guys are just going shot for shot great golf dare we say it the playoff holes 10 and 18 should they be required i think you're chasing up <laughs> uh, Sandy, are you? It'd be a fitting finale at this stage, the way these two have gone about proceedings. Now, Appleby. The thing is that uh, Scotty Laycock now has got the honour off him. Okay. So it's quite a case of yep. he's leading and dealing now. No temptation to use the, the driver here, Jack. Uh, just aim for that second of the traps that they can see up front, 222 metres away. And if uh, we follow the script, it won't be too far away from where Scotty Playcock's balls landed. They haven't been too far from each other all day. It's just been engrossing stuff, hasn't it? Well, the galleries must have thoroughly enjoyed this, Pat, because uh, of the quality of the golf. Well, Jack, as I said, uh, the park and ride, we're all a little bit worried about whether 
the galleries would uh, take to that, but they have, and they've packed it out. There's big crowds out here now, and they're just loving us. We haven't seen an Australian open up here for 28 years. And he's safely on the dance floor for Stuart Appleby. Brett Rumford is playing with Thomas Bjorn. Here he is on 17 with an eagle opportunity. So he's coming home with a wet sail, getting it to three under. And good to see these young players are the future of the game. Here's another one, Adam Scott. Hoping to walk away with just minimal damage at 18. And he will. Look out for him next year. Final round 70 after 73, 70 and 71 to be even for the championship. Not everyone's going home at the moment. There it is. Look at that. Laycock and Appleby are going to fight it out right to the end and we'll be with them. There are just 10 players remaining out on the course. Two are locked together at the top of the leaderboard. And they were at the start of the day, Appleby and Laycock, and they're still going head to head. A beautiful shot from Stuart Appleby right at the stick. Three metre putt for a birdie. Ernie yeah. Els at the 17th. Last of the par fives, which will in two for Big Annie. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Ernie. Well, coming home a bit of a wet sail, Ernie. A bit late, I was guess, but uh, drive it down here at 17 and split the middle of the ferry. This is huge. On and on and on and on. Massive tee shot from the big South African is Scott Laycock trying to answer Stuart Appleby's fine second in here at 14, 15 rather. It's got a wedge going a little long though, has to get down, back trap. Oof. That is a mean trap shot he's left himself with because not a lot of green there between his ball and the edge of the bunker. 
Rod Pampling playing his third shot. Nine players have broken 70 so far today. Wales and Australia doing battle at the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff on Monday. Uh, hoping for that to be a memorable sporting day and you can see all that action on 7 live. Just check your local guides for details. Wales and Australia. And it could be e an even bigger day. Should Australia account for Uruguay or keep them to a draw, uh, Australia will advance. They will become the 32nd country to qualify for the World Cup. Now, that's tomorrow morning, but just check your local guides uh, for times. But uh, it's coming away tomorrow morning early on 7. Australia and Uruguay from Montevideo. Good luck to Frank Farina and his men. Congratulations to Andrew Johns and the Kangaroos who stitched up the Poms overnight. 2-1 in the series. Now this is a very delicate shot as you can see. Quite a bit of sand to go across and then once it gets out of the bunker it's almost like a slippery dip down to the hole. Can he get this to check? And of course if he gets too cute with it you can leave it in there. Big, big shot for Scott Laycock. Remembering Appleby in there with about a three metre putt for a birdie. Oh, that's a wonderful shot. Got it coming down nice and soft. Well, the Australian Golf Union would be proud to have uh, either of uh, the names of these two players on the Stonehaven Cup. Scott Laycock or Stuart Appleby, which one will it be? But uh, they have produced today majestic golf. And given this championship the first to be staged up in Queensland since 1973, a very fitting finale. Just going to move a little bit to his right. Jack, if they do need a playoff, it'll only be the sixth. We had one in 1948, Ossie Pickworth won then. 64, Jack Nicholas, 72, Peter Thompson, and more recently, John Moss in 1990. And uh, Lee Westwood beat Greg Norman at uh, Metropolitan in 1997. Have a look at the side of Stuart's hat. He's got written on it, she'll be apples. I wonder if it will be come the end of the day. Just trying to feel the line and the speed. So this is for birdie and this to take him back into the outright lead the 15th. Oh. Started it straight at the cup and he needed to start it outside the left edge. Interestingly enough, uh, a bit of match play tactic getting in here. Stuart Appleby would normally mark that perhaps and walk away. But he's selecting to putt out get his four, put the pressure on, back on Scott Laycock. He's got a putt of just over a metre for a par. Does the hole start to get a little smaller, Jack? Well, you're starting to get into the stage where the tension builds and the whole issue becomes one of keeping yourself calm deep breaths, keep the tension out of your hands. You don't want to start 
white knuckling the club at this point in time. But he's got a very good temperament, this guy. Now, he will have seen Stuart Appleby's break to the right of the cup. This for par, just to keep him share of the lead. No. He gave the hole away. Well. Uncharacteristic bogey for Scott Laycock. Stuart Appleby, now the leader, by one. It's the second shot that Laycock has dropped uh, today. Three holes to go. The two Victorians battle on. Rod Pampling, meantime, has a birdie opportunity at 17, but misses to the left. Birdie putt for Peter Lonard to go to five under. Not going to break. He and Jeff Ogilvie currently tied at four under for equal fifth. And this all looking good for Ernie Alster finishing third place on his own. Pampling for his par at 17. Gets it, stays five under, one to play, one behind Ernie Els. He knows, though, with his length, Renton, that uh, that's an opportunity missed. Peter Lonard for his par for a round of 67. Four under for the day, four under for the championship. 68, 72, 73, 67 for Peter Lonard. Yeah, good tournament for Peter Lonard. That's what Ernie's got. 125 left. Oh, but this Jack, I can tell you, he's smashed that 352 off the tee and just a pitching wedge, which I believe, to this par 5, 17th hole and a great opportunity to make three. Moving on to the 16th, the par three of 186 metres, a hole that was lengthened slightly for this open. This is one of my favourite holes on the golf course. I think it's a terrific par three, a bit like the 15th at Kingston Heath, or even a little bit like the 7th of the composite at Royal Melbourne. You can see considerably uphill, big trap right in the front. If you don't get enough elevation. And today it's averaging just over its par, but it's uh, been the third most difficult all week. Likes it. Now will it roll back down the slope? Yes, it will. Look at that. Oh, he's just tightening the screws a little down. Listen to the crowd, Sandy. Oh. Scott Laycock. Four iron, what a fantastic shot. And they're going <laughs> crazy around the green here. sure the shot was commensurate with uh, the result but as I've said many times before Sandy you don't have to write how it's just how many that counts when picking up again and it's getting very very dark I hope you've got your umbrella for the presentation Sandy you'll need one Now 193 up here now, Scotty, just the way this tournament's unfolding, don't be surprised to see this one go pretty well straight at it. You see some fantastic iron shots this week. Started out to the right, drawing back, right in edge of the green. Not a bad result, stay there now. Stay there, not too bad. The meter to the left, it would have been perfect. But he's now playing, once again, catch up golf as Appleby wrestles the lead back on his own 
Three to play. Appleby by one. Earls is holding on to third spot. But Pampling's on his hammer. This is Scott Laycock in picture, just calling his caddy over. Pressure right on him at the moment as he trails by one, playing 16. He trails Stuart Appleby. Bruce Critchley has rejoined us for a big finish, Bruce. Well, it's been a big round of golf, I must say, from both players. And we've got two referees, Tim Gale and Michael Norton, both from Victoria, who are the referees in the question mark whether he can tap something down or whether there's a pitch mark or can he remove it I don't think it was growing if it had been a piece of grass sticking up that was growing he couldn't have touched that might have been moving I think <laughs> the beetle or interestingly or enough here. Jack coming home over the three days so far Appleby has played 16 17 and 18 at a couple under and at Laycock Square That's for 16, 17 and 18. Using the putter from just off the putting surface. Once it gets onto the green, it'll start swinging back to the right. Oh. Woo. It's had a rush of blood. Well, it's one of those shots that maybe earlier in the week would have been played with a, a little lofted club, a little chip and run. But that was uh, the right shot there. So another door opening. We'll go ahe ahead to the 17th. And Ernie Else, who's finishing so well, bound to make a birdie. But can he get an eagle? He can. Right in the middle, travelling a bit. Five threes in a row. Five under par for the last four holes. On 18. Thomas Bjorn, who's been playing with Brett Rumford today. Trying to finish with a three. Great effort. Wonderful effort from where he was, but that will be a round of 73, and he finishes two over for the championship.
17 pretty good holes there, Sandy, apart from a nine at the ninth and five other, other double bogeys. Seven at the 11th, that was a triple bogey, so knock out half a dozen holes and he'd have won the tournament. But if Sanans were pops and pans, back to 16. Well, this is a huge putt. This is perhaps the championship right here. This to save par at 16. Remember, Appleby in closer for a birdie. Well, he can't believe it. The fist was there, ready to start shaking to stir him on. I think if we ever saw that one again, it was a it almost was in the hole and then took a, a definite kink to the left. I cannot believe it that it's now left him two behind Stuart Appleby. Jack, are you absolutely certain he was closer, that he was further away than Appleby? Because I wondered, thought I saw Appleby's marker. It was almost as though he elected to go on. Well, I stand corrected, but I no, I think it was his putt. Mm, I think you're right looking at that. It's really got closer than I thought. Wonderful feeling. Even if he two putts, he goes a stroke further ahead. If he can roll this in, and he knows there's a little bit of movement from right to left, right at the cup. But Laycock has really opened the door with 15 and 16. This is the putt that could shut the gate. It could shut the gate. Appleby is heading for home now as he leads by three. He's got it to 13 under par. Ahead to 18, James Nettie's. Just 119 metres for James Nettie's approach shot to the 18th. Started a little bit out to the right. Looks to be heading yeah. to the heart of the green. Yeah, safely on, safely on. He has a bit of a chance here at the last. Sampling now. Another very good tee shot. Oh, this is all over it. All over the stick. Get in. This is all over it. And it has got... Oh, tell you what, it jammed in the side of the hole and hopped on. Without the pin in there, it might have gone in. Well, you wanted a big finish and you've got it here on seven in the Holden Australian Open. Stuart Appleby is heading towards his first national title.
approaching the climax of the Holden Australian Open for 2001. And the man leading the way is on 17, Stuart oh, yeah. Appleby. Yeah, come on, Stuart. Yes. Oh, this looks perfect again. Down the right half of the fairway. And we'll get the kick down the hill. Now comes decision time. Remember, he laid up with a little late iron yesterday. What's he going to do this afternoon with a three-shot lead? Yes, he's not played this hole well, and it's certainly not inconceivable that Laycock could make four and that will be six. Not that I wish that would happen, but uh, it's been happening here all week. Scott Laycock, of course, not as long from the tee. He didn't leave anything of that on the tee. He's fairly given that everything he had. And it just clears that tongue of rough, which eats out into the right side of the fairway, but it's not going to get all the way down the bottom. We'll go to the 18th green, James Nitties. This to win the amateur prize. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's been under the way. He probably wouldn't know what uh, Chris Campbell put in a score that was some two hours ago of three over for the championship. It wouldn't have been on the leader's board. But he's battled away after taking seven at the tenth. Showed a lot of character to get it round in 74. And a young man, yet another one, Jack, with a great future in front of him. Yeah, he's a great guy and uh, he's got terrific work ethics. Works very hard on his game. Loves playing golf. Pampling for birdie at the final hole. And he's got it. Sixty seven for Pampling, that's a fine score and a very good open for Rod Pampling. The green is clear. Uh, else who's finishing best of all. Too little too late. Well, Ernie into eighteen with eight iron. He's really come home with a win on a big huge sail and pulled it way left. The crowd have loved Ernie here today. He's just shown us what golf he can really play these last few holes. Hasn't stopped rolling yet. Uh, it has now. It's all right. I might gallop up there and put a coin underneath it while it's stationary. <laughs> but disappointing. He's played quite beautifully the last few. Couldn't get a putt in, in the first 12 or 13 holes. Hogue will be in a little bit of trouble here. Ball above the feet, massive lip in front of him, but he's going for it. Tough shot, Bruce. He really needs a nine iron to clear the lip. And he hasn't cleared the lip in part of part of it. A little bit too game. Grant Dodd did the same thing in that trap yesterday and uh, had a bit of trouble with his 18th. Well, that's certainly a better effort, but that's also heading left. There's a look at uh, there's only else's ball in the middle of the middle of the screen. But the twelfth was the undoing of him. He was chasing the leaders at that point in third place, took eight there, and tends to rush a little bit at moments of Christ when he should be calming down. To seventeen. Scott Laycock, it would appear, is first to play. Yes, he's Oh yeah, and uh, the problem he's got, he's got a lot of difficulty with his shot because it's a hanging lie, the fairway's running away, quite a gradient here, quite a slope to work with. And there's a tree, of course, a menacing tree in front of the green to try and draw it around, but he knows he has to do something special. And he's done some beautiful, beautiful shots today. But uh, now he's got a little decision about club selection as well. He just has to try and do something special here now. from the green looking back up there's the tree that Lindsay's talking about Lindsay are we certain he's going for this or is he is this might not this be a layup no he's he's definitely going don't worry about that what's the distance he's got 200 meters to go oh, yeah, well then in go zone but he's got a downhill lie tricky shot but he's played great golf today got it going at the tree has to get lucky and it has. Oh, gee, I don't know where this might have gone in the water. <laughs> wow, I must have just caught the tree. Look, I missed it. 
No, it's not in the water. Just no, it is short of the water. There's the shot that he's got left. Not an easy one. Downhill to uh, uphill to an elevated green out of the rough with a pin cut right on the front of the green. It's like trying to stop it down Highway 1, really. That will be uh, much further down, uh, an easier shot. And he hits the ball higher than <coughs> what his playing partner, Scott Laycock, does anyway. Well, there's no decision time here, Jack, because he's got 178. He can get it home. You don't mess with the pin. The pin's only on 8 metres. He's got about 120 to the water, but that won't be a factor. I mean, he's nailed this drive beautifully. 301 metres. He's on the right half of the fairway, so he can get a view of the flag. Just got the signal. He's got 6 iron, 178 metres. This could be the shot that wins the Australian Open. He's got it way over the top of the tree and right at the flag. They love it back here reason so to do. Beautiful shot. What he really had to do was get it over the river. And he's done. But there's still a few evil places to go until he gets to the 18th green. You don't count your chickens. Let's have another look at that shot of Stuart Appleby's Pat's head over the top of the big gum. Just right at the stick. Finishing up on that upper level, but I don't think he'd mind that all, at all. He and Joey just having a little smile to themselves as they struck down the 17th fairway with a three-shot lead. And all of a sudden, uh, it will seem a little more like a very pleasant stroll, especially when he comes to 18 and he's not far away. In the box seat on 17, leading by three, and not far from his first national title. Closing stages of the Holden Australian Open. It's come down to two gentlemen, but it's Stuart Appleby who's snuck ahead of this man, Scott Laycock. Roll back. Roll back. 
wants a rollback. You can hear him crying for it. He needs Fine something working. if he's going to stay in this fight. Not the role that he had in mind. Up ahead at the 18th, else, just on the edge of the green in two. And finishing, putting much better at the end. It's been a fine comeback, but he had to wait 12 holes before he notched his first birdie. And then he had three more and an eagle. And in the end, the 67 led the, led the tournament after round one, but really didn't quite hold enough putts when it really mattered. Good tournament for him, though. Playing with him, Jeff Ogilvy. <laughs> Disappointing finish for him today. That is a round of 71 for Jeff. 71-65, 74-71. He finishes at minus three. 31-40 today, so uh, he just needs to get those bad holes off his scorecard and uh, the sky's the limit for Jeff Ogilvy. It's a bit of course management work to do, I think. This must go in. And since his, his race is run, I think when he didn't get down in two out of the bunker at 15 and let Appleby ahead. But I thought the important hole for Appleby instantly was the, the short 14th when he holed a seven or eight footer to stay level after Laycock had got a two there and just uh, hung on since then. It's been so strong. That will be six under for the round. Uh, when you consider this is the last round of an Australian Open. We had uh, eight uh, at the tw 12th, I think it was. Yep. A triple bogey at the par five that he would normally knock it on in two. So uh, six under, now putting for an eagle to go eight under. And all in all this week, he's had uh, four bogeys and a triple bogey. A very quick putt this, straight down the slope. Already been a couple of eagles here. It'll come from his right and quick. take him to seven under and of course if he gets a four at the last that'll be a new course record of 64 par here 71 so Stewart heads towards the 18th with Scott Laycock and then he'll have that wonderful walk up the 72nd hole we should have a look at what lies ahead because it is, Jack, a strong finishing hole here at the Grand. Yeah, well, the first thing to recognise, it's 389 metres, so it's not a short hole by any stretch of the imagination. You drive over the crest of the hill here, and then there's two bunkers on the left. The first one, 213. The second one, 239. You really want to be up to the right. We've made those bunkers on the left what we consider the no-go zone. So, uh, again, the tilt on the fairway for right, from right to left. So right half of the fairway is a perfect line. And then an uphill second shot to a very well bunkered green. Two big traps right and left. And then the longish one there that's short. And a swale cut in front of the hole here, which uh, if you come up short, your golf ball runs down the Grand's Valley of Sin, if you like, into the rough. 21 metres long, big slope from back to front on this green. And the pin today at 18, 13 metres on and 8 from the left. Perhaps playing a little easier, or well, they all have today, I think a bit easier than they have in previous days because there's just been 
hardly any breeze at all. 12 birdies and 33 pars. Back to the tee. Yes, Jack, and we arrive on this fairway and the crowds are fantastic. Uh, it's obviously a testimony to the, the work that they've put into this event and this is the sort of result they would have wanted. Just one good tee shot, that's all he needs. Finish it off today. Lost it right, Pat. And it's heading out right. In amongst the crowd. Did he get a fortuitous bounce? Just across from the left, Sean. Big tree up here that'll obscure his second, and there's water as well. So, uh, with a three shot cush. Three or four, is it now? Four. And we've just had some information in on the course that he's quite all right. Now, Scotty Lakoff, who can really hold his head high, he's played beautiful golf today. Just beaten by a guy that's just played a little bit better, and he's hit this up the left side, hard, hugging left side, fading back into the fairway. Another good drive. Very good. Look at the galleries awaiting this final pairing at the 18th. 18th green, totally ringed. Thousands of golfing fans have been starved of the national title here in Queensland. This is just the fifth time it's been played here. The first time at the Grand. And they certainly have given it their stamp of approval. Stuart Appleby in trouble off the tee at the last. He'll be okay, quite okay, to win this year's national title. The 18th lined on both sides of the fairway as they await the shots, the second shots of Appleby and Laycock. Stuart Appleby, the pressure valve released, knowing that he can play this shot and take a stroll. Jack, that he'll remember for a long, long time. Yeah, it's a wonderful feeling. It, uh, all the hard work that you put in uh, comes rushing back to you. There's the shot that he's got. 
the skirting left of the big trees and then uh, to a pin that's certainly not easy to get at. But he's quite a long way back, so he'll be going in with a much straighter face club than I think he anticipated. 165. A little bit on the upslope, so that'll help shoot the ball up in the air. Yeah, up to nine. He's just discussing here, Jack. Um, it's nice style four shot cushion. Uh, we were looking the way his body language told us from that drive that it was heading a little bit further right than this, but once I got up amongst the crowd, it had stopped uh, just on the first cut of rough, so he's lying quite nicely. As you said, just a slight upslope. Only trouble here is the water right, but that shouldn't be in the equation. Yes, it'll be a big week for the, the big A's, won't it? Robert Allenby last week, his big mate, and this is right out of it again. Settle down, do that. <laughs> well, it just wouldn't take the bite. They've been taking the bite on these greens most of the afternoon. And that is not an easy bunker shot. Maybe Grant, he's got a shot or two in hand. There's, there's young Laycock, just above the big bunker that Ogilvy was in. Good angle to come in from. Perfect place, Bruce, isn't it, to go at the stick, being over, more over on the left. Yes, and Jack, he's hit his irons absolutely beautifully today, so he's got 7 iron here from 138. I'd like to see him finish with a good one. It's been a great tournament. Going a little bit left, but it should be okay for length. A little short. Oh, spin back. I was worried a little bit at the front of this green. It's left of the bung. It's not above the, the really steep slope. And of course, more concern now, I suppose, to Lakehook. He can't win, but he's two ahead of Ernie Else in three, third place. So. Uh, even he could afford a three putt and still come second. Though in front of crowds like this, you really do want to finish in some sort of style. Well, this is Stuart Appleby's moment, and we'll let the crowd tell the story. Great effort by Stuart Appleby, Jack, but a very gutsy effort by Scott Laycock. Oh, look, that, that golf they were playing there earlier in the day was just phenomenal golf, considering it's the last round of an Australian Open. And I think Lindsay's quite right. I think that uh, Scott Laycock can hold his head high. He's really gone to the next level. And from Stuart Appleby's point of view, as a young bloke in Kahuna, he would have been dreaming about winning this championship and walking up that slope to the 18th green. He wouldn't be a human being if uh, the hairs on the back of his neck weren't standing up. Just a little bit of work to do here uh, because uh, he's got to get this to stop. Paddy's with his coach at the moment, I think. Stephen Van, you, have you got him, Pat? Got Steve Van right here, very happy Steve Van too. He's got, still got a tough shot left, but uh, mate, this has just been a wonderful ball striking round. Oh, it's just been fantastic, hasn't it? I mean, uh, he's been on a mission all week and, you know, he's just uh, put it together today. And, uh, I mean, these two guys, I mean, both of them deserve to win. It's been fantastic golf. Yeah, he's got special affinity for this area, this part of the world as well. Hasn't well, that's great, yeah. Look, he's, uh, his mum and dad are here this week, and Renee's mum and dad, and his uh, new girlfriend from the States. But uh, he kind of feels like he's back home here this week in the Gold Coast. All right, mate. Job well done. Thanks. Stephen Bann, coach of Stuart Appleby, congratulating both players. Scott Laycock as well. I think it's going to be Laycock to play first, uh, Sandy, because he's further away. And uh, also he'll probably putt out, as is traditional. Uphill left to right, breaking putt for a birdie for Scott Laycock. And he smashed it past the hole. Will it roll back? 
I don't think so. Yeah, you may need those mm, three putts, <laughs> that extra couple of shots in front of Els. No, it was wonderful. It was just a case of who could sustain the momentum the longest, and that's turned out to be Stuart Appleby. And as you say, Jack, he's got a little bit of work to do. You'd like to always niggles in your mind. You could, whilst it would be impossible really for him to lose from here, it's, uh, in a sense, he's almost do quite well to get down in three. I think he'll knock this out to the right of the hole. Surely he won't go up the stick because it'll bring that, yeah, that's what I thought. It'll bring that uh, sway on the front if he goes at the flag. So he's just going to knock it out here to the right, to the fat part of the green, up on that same tier as the pin. Cleverly thought out. Well, I agree with you, Bruce. I thought the turning point was at 14 where Scott Laycock didn't get that ball out of the bunker, uh, up and down, I mean, and also at 16 where Stuart Appleby surely didn't intend to pull his iron shot to the left, almost stayed in the fringe and rolled back to a couple of metres where he made two and Scott Laycock took three to get down. Surely they were the two crucial turning points of this round and as to the decision as who would be the 2001 Holden Australian Open champion. We've got uh, his mate Robert Allenby has already won an Open and I'm sure he'll very much appreciate having an Australian Open in his CV. And don't let's ever forget the wonderful round he put together on unquestionably the hardest day of the year, or day of the week now, yesterday, in strong winds. 67. Yeah, without dropping a shot, but everybody else was dropping shots in handfuls all over the place and struggling. He, no mistakes and four birdies. It was terrific. And that put him in a position to go on to win today. Yeah, sometimes they're your best weeks when you, you've got to grind it out. And Stuart's done that well, even by his own admission, he hasn't probably struck it as well as he would have liked, although today has been fantastic. <laughs> Let's tease them right to the end. Now, Jack, do you, do you mark that and, or, or do you knock it in because uh, you always like to hit the final blow? Well, he should mark it. He's going to mark it. <laughs> Scott Laycock still got two putts to lock up second place, but if Appleby were to knock his in, there'd be people running about and carrying on. Scott Laycock still got a couple of metre putt for a par. And I think the great thing it shows once again this extraordinary game which has etiquette and how you behave sort of written into the rules of the game and you're ever mindful of the man you're out there playing with and his needs and requirements and that's exactly the right thing to do. It's not just so that you have the last shot of the championship, it's so that they have a, a reasonable chance of completing their day in the way they'd like. Well, let's hope he knocks this in now. Ah, well done. What a great week for Scotty Laycock. He won a Victorian Open title earlier this year. He's had a marvellous year in Japan. He's going to run second in the Holden Australian Open. A round of 68. And Stuart Appleby is our champion. What a mighty performance after opening with a round of 69, 70, 67. And the icing on the cake was a 65 today.
Well, now just the formalities remain into the recorder's hut. Check through the score. You're responsible ultimately for your own score, even though your colleague has marked the paper. Brett Ogle there congratulating him. Brett, who had a pretty good first couple of days here in there. They'll shut the door in all probability. He can check the score because it's still possible to get it wrong. And if you mark for a score less than you've actually taken, which is highly unlikely, you're at the tournament. Yeah, absolutely. Unfortunately, it's a part of the formalities of the game that can never be overlooked. And, uh, Simon from the AGU, they're just holding the Stonehaven Cup. He will, of course, get a replica of that. And full credit to both of these guys who played the game the way it ought to be played. Tough, but in good spirit. Yes, yeah, nice to see a day in the end when the wind dropped a little bit, the overnight rain softened the course just a fraction, and we actually had a very fair day's golf and some marvellous golf to go with it. Joey's caddy more than pleased. So Stuart Appleby wins by three from Ernie Els. is done. Colleen Sayet, Sayet, the latest, the youngest girlfriend of, of Stuart Appleby, hugging the parents of Stuart and why not? It's been a marvellous day, it's been a marvellous four days and a kiss for the champion. <laughs> There's an empty bottle out there worth some worth plenty of money now. 
that was just exhilarating golf from hole one to hole 18. Congratulations. That was uh, hard work, was an understatement. Um, I knew Scotty was going to push me good all the way. Uh, he's got a solid swing. Um, I haven't played with Scotty since probably, I think, in 94 and in, played well in Japan this year. So just, and he was swinging so smooth. And it really was. I mean, we were really both fighting it hard. Uh, we I didn't look at the leaderboard all day. Really pretty much knew it was us. The way we were making that many birdies, I didn't feel like anyone else was going to catch us. So to, to sort of have Scotty stall at the end was, was very fortunate on my behalf. I really honestly thought it was going to go down, right down the last hole. I mean, it was nerve-wracking all day. I was taking deep breaths from hole one. <laughs> You birded, what, 9, 10, 11, 12, and still he stuck right on your toe. You thought, is he ever going to go away? Yeah, 9, uh, nine. he hit a great shot in the 9. I had a perfect yardage for a 9 iron. And, and again, I just told myself, put a good swing on it. It's perfect length. If you hit this solid, you'll, it, it'll be good. You know, obviously, it turned out great. We made birdies there. And then it was, you know, 10, 11, 12. Was, uh, that's where I felt like we really got away from anybody else who might have been snooping around. Uh, and it was going to have to be a putting competition in the end because we are both hitting it pretty good. Now, mate, your only other victory on Australian soil was the Coolum Classic back in 1998. This is a thrill that you can't put into words, I suppose. Yeah, 98 was a, was a big, was a, a very big year for me in, in many ways. Uh, certainly 98, finishing at Coolum, having a win was, was pretty huge. Had a lot of friends there and I guess here I've got just about everybody that I know here for friends. Being away from Melbourne, which is pretty cool, mum and dad. Yeah, actually, is very emotional. <laughs> actually, she's, I don't know what she's crying about. And, um, she's more emotional than you are. Yeah, I guess. You just won the Australian Open. Yeah. Um, so that was really cool. Mum, having mum and dad here, my aunties, and, uh, and, and Renee's mum and dad, and, uh, and young Stewie, my brother-in-law. And having Ashley's cool too, it really is. It's, it's been a really good fun day. I didn't really, I guess the secret of winning is not knowing when you've won or going to win a tournament, you just sort of get out of your own way. Very hard thing to do though. We're waiting out there beside the 18th to one of the new national champion. You are it. Enjoy it. Thank you, it's nice, buddy. Well Thanks. done, mate. And what a wonderful winner, Jack uh, Stuart Appleby. And what a great finale to this championship. Laycock and uh, Appleby put on today. Yeah, well, I think it's deserving of an Australian Open finish and uh, none more so deserving than Stuart Appleby. A lot of uh, problems uh, he had there with his wife getting killed and uh, uh, little things that he's done. For example, just a few weeks ago, he pitched up at a junior presentation award at Concord. Lovely things like that, which uh, makes him a, a great Australian. And I think uh, he's a deserving winner of our Australian Open as all the pomp and pageantry <laughs> This yeah, is making right. me feel at home, never mind Stuart Appleby. But look at the papers coming, marching up the 18th before the presentation to Stuart Appleby. In a way, it was a shame that someone had to lose today. Laycock did lose, but he can hold his head up high. Well, we said right from the word go that uh, he had a terrific rhythm to his swing. And of course, uh, I think he's learned a lot in Japan this year. I believe, as I said in the telecast, he's taken his game to another level. And I think uh, we're going to hear a lot more from Scott Laycock because he's getting better and better all the time at, at 30 years of age. He's still got plenty of good golf in front of him. And uh, I think the way we saw him play today, he can play anywhere in the world. But this really was Appleby's week. And in many respects, you'll look back on this championship and think of yesterday's 67. In very difficult conditions, he didn't drop a shot. He set himself up to win the championship on Saturday. Yeah, well, quite often, uh, as I was saying in the telecast, uh, when you don't quite play as well as you'd like, but you chip and putt well. And yesterday, Stuart seemed to focus on the fact that it was a difficult day's golf, and uh, he managed to get round there with bogey free. Well, I think it's almost time for the presentation. Let's join Sandia Roberts. Thank you, Renton. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for the man who shot 65 in his final round and he's won his first national title, Stuart Appleby. <laughs> Magnificent achievement. And ladies and gentlemen, I'll now call upon the captain of the Grand to come forward and say a few words, and I'm very sure that you'll make him welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr John Gross. Thanks, John. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the members and all the dedicated staff at the Grand, uh, we welcome and uh, we hope you've had a great week. Uh, I've got to keep this short and sweet. 
I'd just like to say to the AGU, it's been a long time between drinks in Queensland. We hope it won't be 28 years before it comes back. Thank you, John. John Goss, and of course, once again, the sponsors of an event like this have been absolutely fantastic, and it has been uh, the red and white of Holden that has again come to the fore. I know that uh, Peter Hannenberger and the Australian Open are very, very close, and I'll ask you to make him welcome. The Chairman and Managing Director of Holden, Peter Hannenberger. Good afternoon. On behalf of Holden, I would like to congratulate you, everybody involved here today, for what has been another fantastic tournament. The Holden Australian Open for 2001 has certainly lived up to its, its reputation as Australia's premier golf event. I take this opportunity to thank all the golfers for their outstanding play over the last four days and also to the Queensland golf fans who have attended. And finally, to all those who have worked behind the scene, your efforts and dedication has ensured another very successful Holden Australian Open. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Credit also, ladies and gentlemen, must go to the Australian Golf Union, and I'll call upon their president to come forward and say a few words. Make him welcome, Mr. John Westacott. Thank you, John. Thank you very much, Sandy. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Australian Golf Union, I would like to express our sincere appreciation to Holden for the continued support of the Holden Australian Open. This is their sixth year Holden have been the naming rights sponsors and the eighth year they have been involved with the championship. Holden and Golf have been a great partnership and the AGU looks forward to continuing with Holden for many years to come. We would also like to thank and acknowledge all our other sponsors. To the Grand Golf Club, congratulations on hosting such a wonderful Open. The course and the conditions have been exceptional, and this has proved a magnificent venue. A special thanks to the course superintendent, Rod Cook, and his staff for presenting the course in such a great condition. I would also like to acknowledge Channel 7's coverage. Surely this has to be one of the most outstanding events telecast in the world. To all the IMG team, well done on a great effort in staging the championships and a very special thanks to all the volunteers so well coordinated by Barry Neal. Without your tremendous efforts, this championship could not have taken place. <laughs> Queensland, beautiful and perfect they say. The AGU is delighted to bring out the national championships back to the Sunshine Coast the first time since 1973. The Gold Coast, where we are. <laughs> to all the players, a very special thanks for a continuing support of the Australian Open. The AGU appreciates your efforts and will continue to work hard to ensure the Holden Australian Open is one of the world's great championships. You can expect to see another successful Open at Victoria Golf Club next year. Finally, to our winner, our Victorian Stewie Appleby, congratulations on winning the greatest prize in Australian golf. John, stay with us and I'll ask Peter to come forward too. Some of the greatest names in golf are inscribed on the Stonehaven Cup. Now another name will go on to that cup and that, ladies and gentlemen, is Stuart Appleby. Great, Paul. Very well done. Stuart, uh, congratulations. Uh, look, everyone here just wants to say to both you and Scotty Laycock, first of all, congratulations on a darn great dogfight. Fantastic. A wonderful afternoon's golf. Thanks. Um, first of all, I'd just like to thank Scott. Uh, he was had me nervous all day, he had me pushing me all day. Uh, I guess it was a bit of a match play format for us uh, fighting it out. And and um, oh, I haven't had uh, been in a situation like this for, for, for quite a long time. Been in uh, 
feeling the nerves, feeling like you just couldn't breathe. Uh, it is. It was really hard work, and uh, I'm very thankful to a lot of people for getting me to this, uh, getting me here. Certainly, my coach Banny and uh, my trainer Vern have been great. Mum and Dad, obviously, I've got the whole clan from uh, down south in Victoria. Uh, we've jumped north across a few borders to get here, and uh, I must thank uh, Holden, obviously, for for really. Um, uh, supplying a lot of good product to the tournaments that uh, when I come back to Oz and AGU for putting on a good event. The Grand did a great job, got the course in great shape and uh, it really turned out to be a good spectacle. And obviously the people in the red, the red, red shirts, uh, red hats did an unbelievable job. Thank you very much Queenslanders. It's good to see you guys out in force again and well done to Channel 7. Your first national title, just before you go, Stewie, your first national title, probably have a spell but it's a great springboard for next year for you. I guess I'd had a, a bit of a softy, I felt, by normal, what I'd like to have been playing. Um, not a, a bad year, but uh, I learned a lot about my game. I learned I was trying to push a little bit too hard and uh, trying to get the ball in the hole. And at times, that just is the worst thing you can do. So to come here at the end of the year, come back to Australia, I've been away for 10 months, and obviously since September 11, all the Australians overseas really wanted to be home. And now more than ever, I feel pretty proud to be an Aussie, greatest country in the world. Um, and we are just so lucky. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it once again for our 2001 champion, Stuart Appleby. a moment that will live forever in the memory of Stuart Appleby as he clutches the Stonehaven Cup as the Australian Open Champion 2001. This was his week, he played superbly. We must think of course of Scott Laycock, they produced a great finish. And as we end our uh, telecast here in Queensland, I have uh, a special thing to take away in the plane with me. It's your new book, Jack, Out of the Rough. Yeah, well I've been in plenty of rough, so uh, <laughs> if you're looking for a a fairly tasty Christmas read, there it is. But uh, just in closing about uh, the Stonehaven Cup and Stuart Appleby, uh, there was a fairly controversial selection of golf courses, but I've got to say in the end, the right person won Stuart Appleby. He is a great player and uh, represents us extremely well around the world. So in the end, we got a good winner. 
We got a good winner and everybody up here in Queensland thoroughly enjoyed the championship being back in this part of Australia. That's uh, it from the Seven Network here today. But remember, early tomorrow morning on Seven, there's that uh, World Cup qualifier. Uruguay against Australia at uh, Montevideo. Can the Australians get that 32nd place in the, the World Soccer Cup? But everybody hoping that they can. Meanwhile, from Queensland, from all of us here, goodbye. Thank you.